the first generation MacBook Pro. An iconic look, first introduced in the late model power books, would be further refined here. Unfortunately, most early model Intel Macs have a few large limitations, but that still didn't stop them from being quite useful in their day. Late first generation models would switch to the new at the time, Penryn CPU architecture. This transition, along with a few other tweaks, would make it so these machines saw much newer software support than prior models. Hey everyone, how's it going? Mark here. Welcome back to another video. Now today I've got my early 2008 MacBook Pro right here, and it's on the newest officially supported operating system from Apple, 10.11. But I wanted to see if we can actually try to install a modern Mac OS that's still going to get software updates and support. So we're going to take a look at the OpenCore Legacy Patcher, and I've got the website pulled up right here. So we're going to take a look at trying to get a currently supported Mac OS operating system installed on here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the supported models page for the first step. And all this is going to do is this is just going to patch everything so we can try to use a newer version of Mac OS than is supported on the hardware. That's the gist of it anyways. We have the MacBook Pro 4,1, the early 08. So there is a note that there's GPU acceleration issues, at least in the public beta. This is noting back to Big Sur, but still an issue in Monterey. I've scrolled through here and kind of read into it. The patches are now included in the public build of the legacy patcher, and hopefully we do have hardware support with this old NVIDIA GPU. The next thing we're gonna do is go on to step two. For the note at the top right here, it says a 16 gig or more USB stick. I've got one right here, it's 32 gigs, so we're gonna try this out. And first thing first, let's go ahead and download the Patcher app. All right, so we're on version 0.4.11. Going to download the GUI Patcher right here. That's what they were using in the guide. So let's save this. Skipping ahead a little, I went ahead and extracted the zip file we downloaded just now, and here's our patcher app. I already put it in the applications folder. So I'm gonna open this. Awesome, no issues at all there, getting that open on the first try. Now that we have this open, create macOS installer is gonna be our first choice. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click download macOS installer. I don't have anything already pre-downloaded for this. All right, let's try to download macOS Monterey and let's hope this actually works. I would like to run the newest choice possible if we can on this old computer. So this is probably gonna take a few minutes. I'll skip ahead. Moving forward a little bit after our download finished, it went ahead and verified everything and then installed the install assistant into our applications folder. So now we're gonna go ahead and click flash installer. It's gonna search our applications folder Let's pull our Monterey download we just did. I'll go ahead and click this. And disk one is our USB disk. So that's gonna be my choice again. Should go ahead and erase everything completely and format it. It's not gonna be an issue. I have nothing important on this memory stick. It says creating installer. It's gonna format and flash our installer to the drive. It can take 30 plus minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip forward in just a moment, and I'll meet you back at the end of this. Well, I've got everything back to where we were. I just clicked to create the installer again and use our existing one we already downloaded. I'm hoping this will actually work. I've cleared it up to 25 gigs free. It's a really small partition, so let's hope this works. All right, looks like it's made our USB installer now, and we're gonna go ahead and install OpenCore to the disk next. Let this do its thing. And it's finished building our configuration, so now install it to the disk. Now here, we're just gonna select the USB stick we created. It should be disk zero for my setup. And I'll select our EFI right here. All right, so with that, we're gonna go ahead and click reboot. And on this restart, we're gonna hold the option key. 
Now that that's popped up, let's click the OpenCore logo EFI boot. Install Mac OS Monterey. All right, so the installer's loaded up now. First thing we're gonna do is launch Disk Utility and make a free space for this. Let's change to show all devices. So I guess for now, I'll remove my Mountain Lion and Snow Leopard setups. And just use this space right here. I'm gonna call it the Monterey HD with the traditional Mac drive naming and change this to APFS. Apply and partition. Okay, so I've kind of given up after fighting with trying to partition the disk here. I'm just going to erase the whole thing. Let's hope this works. And also, let's just hope everything works so I don't have to go through the process of reinstalling macOS just to use this at all. Awesome. So, I can go ahead and close Disk Utility. Let's move on to install macOS Monterey. To set up the installation of macOS Monterey, click Continue. Next, we've got our license agreement. I'm just going to agree to this so we can move on. And we're just going to select the Monterey HD for installation disk there. Continue. So I'm sure the timer is going to flip around a ton. I'll just meet you at the end of this. All right, so it's made it through the first part of the installation there, and the computer just rebooted on its own. I'm going to select the Mac OS installer, and let's continue. finally finished there. Even though it said 25 minutes, it probably took about an hour. Let's boot back into the macOS installer next. I've got a feeling we're about to have a couple restarts again as it finishes the installation process, so just gonna skip ahead for you. Alright, well we're back after a bunch of restarts there and a lot of patience, but I am in the US so let's click continue here written in spoken languages, everything is English US, I'm fine with that. I don't need to enable any accessibility. Let me go ahead and select my Wi-Fi network. All right, now we're just going through data and privacy. I'm not gonna do anything for the migration assistant. And now it's asking for me to log in with my Apple ID or set that up later. I've gone ahead and entered my Apple ID as well as the verification code. So I'm just going to agree to the terms. Okay, and for our user account, Mark T is fine. Let me pick a password now. So it's just setting up my account now. This will probably take a while. It usually does when it comes to iCloud on Macs in my experience. So again, I'm just going to skip ahead. And that finally loaded. I'm just going to customize the settings here. Location services are cool, but I don't want to share analytics with Apple. And screen time, sure, whatever. I'm not going to share my audio recordings. Um, sure, why not enable File Vault and let iCloud unlock it? Continue. Let's go with Auto, see if this actually works. Finally, it looks like I'm logged in successfully on Monterey on this 2008 MacBook Pro. Uh, the keyboard assistant has popped up just because I've been using a USB keyboard through a dongle and a mouse just so that way I'm not in the way of the video. Just quit out of this. And perfect timing. Got a pop-up right here. OpenCore Legacy Patcher has detected that you're booting OpenCore from a USB or external drive. If you would like to boot your Mac normally without a USB drive plugged in, you can install OpenCore to the internal hard drive. Would you like to launch OpenCore Legacy Patcher and install the disk? Okay. Sounds good to me. Uh, sure. 
and install the disk. Disk zero is our SSD, just like the EFI. And punch in my password. Okay, I'm gonna reboot as well as remove our USB stick. And now just hold the option key. Select EFI boot. And there's our Monterey HD. So we have successfully found our setup without the USB drive hooked up. So that's looking a little weird. Everything is extra blue and cool. Let's see if this goes away or stays. All right, well. I think I got everything back to normal. For now, since this really was just supposed to be a pretty quick video, so I don't want to get too much more in this other than the installation on this machine. Uh, I can revisit in the future. I would like to try out some actual day-to-day -day use software that I do, but let's see if YouTube will work. Everything loads a little slow, but I mean, kind of expected for this old Core 2 Duo. Not too bad overall though. All right, so I've got my YouTube page pulled up here. Still fairly usable, about what you'd expect for this old Core 2 Duo hardware. So let's just try playing a video here. I'm not expecting great results since this does have this old NVIDIA hardware. Let's see if we can get it to work. Let's see if we can load... Uh, 720p. Well, seems to be loading just fine. Nothing too exciting, just my video trying to set up Adelie on the PowerBook G4. But we definitely have working YouTube, so that's a huge feat. I wasn't really expecting that on this old laptop, to be honest with you. I pulled up Reddit. It took a little bit to load this page, maybe about 45 seconds or so. Let's see, scrolling fairly slowly, but I mean, it's usable. Let's see, I don't think the video player is gonna work. Oh, wow, that's pretty awesome, I'm surprised. So even the video player on Reddit's working for us. Really slowly with a little bit of hiccups here and there, but I mean, it's fine. You can actually browse Reddit on this and look at some of the videos. Well, I guess time to call it quits here. Just trying to keep this simple for today. So, we've got a successful install of macOS Monterey 12.6.1 on our early 2008 15-inch MacBook Pro, and our 2.4 GHz Core 2 Duo, as well as 6 gigs of RAM, as much as this machine can handle, and our GeForce 8600 MGT. So, some pretty old hardware, but it's at least working on Monterey. I would like to take a look at this in the near future, like I said, just to see if I can try some of my basic day-to-day -day flow on this machine, but that's for another day and another time. Well, let's wrap things up here. It's been a pleasure working with my 2008 MacBook Pro again. I'm really happy to have it back. I've been running a modern Mac OS. I didn't do too much testing with the software, but I figured I'd save that for a future video, like I mentioned earlier. I really do want to see if my daily workflow will or won't work on this machine. I know it's going to be slow, but who really cares? So if you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to ding that bell so you get notified every time I release content like this in the future. Otherwise, if you have any suggestions or ideas for future topics, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching. Until next time.